Ms. Kelsby, I noticed that during the last two gather talks, first Mrs. Cook mentioned um, she invented a tool to get into her car when she lost her keys inside. And then you remember Ms. Terrio mentioned the ways that the ELC students create things all day. Do you remember that backpack made out of a cardboard box? And that they're helping their brains get ready to learn to read. So Dr. Erickson asked us to talk about creativity, but I wonder if we have to make things to be creative. If so, I have to tell you, I might not be too creative. Well, me either. When I think about people who are creative, I think about people who make things, like artists who make paintings or sculptures, or people who write stories or solve problems, like Miss Cook. I don't do any of those things. So I wouldn't consider myself creative either. But I like that quote that, honestly, I sent to Dr. Erickson <laughs> that he started us with. Creative activity could be described as a type of learning process where the teacher and the pupil are located in the same individual. So what does that look like? If I'm a teacher, which I am, I'm sharing what I already know and I'm asking questions to help the student broaden their own thinking. Well, if I'm a student, I'm someone who's studying new information. I'm looking to learn about a new subject, process, or job. A student seeks out information from others and makes sense of it. So when I'm both a student and a teacher at the same time, I'm thinking about what I already know, and I'm asking myself questions. I'm taking in new information and I'm learning from myself and I'm making something new. But can the something new be creating an idea? Could it be a solution to a problem or a funny joke or how to make friends with someone who's shy? Could I be creating something that I can't hold in my hand? I think you're onto something here. I would consider my third graders very creative even when they aren't making something. For example, if a third grader really wants to chat with a friend, I've seen them be creative in many ways. <laughs> For example, they use information they already know, like what's a good time where a teacher allows me to be alone with a friend? When I get a drink of water, or I have to go to the bathroom, or run a helpful errand. They also think about which teachers are most likely to approve this request. <laughs> I have seen t third graders ask themselves, which teachers are historically more lenient? What's the best time to ask? And how should I ask my request? They take this information and their successes and failures and make themselves better students and teachers. So I was talking to the kindergartners at my table during our tea party last week. And I was telling the kindergartners a story about my children when they were small. I mentioned that my children were very messy eaters and I hated to clean up after them when I gave them chocolate cake in particular. So sometimes I gave them chocolate cake in the bathtub. Now then it worked because they could take a bath immediately. I could wash all the crumbs on the frosting out of the tub and we were both happy. So <laughs> the kindergartners at my table got very busy with their creative minds being students and teachers. They created all kind of, kinds of scenarios for me about why my cake plan was a terrible idea. <laughs> they used their prior knowledge, drains get clogged. They added new information that they had from me, which is that my children were messy toddlers and that I hate to clean up chocolate cake. So then they made pictures in their minds of the situation and they offered me a whole list of creative reasons that I should not have used my bathtub solution. So maybe, the kindergartners said, your drain would clog with cake. Maybe your children would climb out of the tub and slip on frosting. Maybe they said, your children will decide that the bathtub is a good place to eat everything. The kindergartners weren't making something that we could hold in our hands, but I would say they were creating while we talked. I see what you're saying about how you can create something without necessarily making something. Third graders also do this all the time. One example that comes to mind for me is when they wrote their pourquoi tales, 
or a creation story about how something came to be. I've never seen so many students working to apply information they already knew with new ideas to come up with this creation story. For example, one third grader wrote about how a coconut got its shell. She incorporated previous knowledge that coconuts have furry shell, they hold water, and they come from a tree, combined with new information she had from Miss Robinson, what a poor quad tail is and what elements it needed to include, and came up with an entirely new creative story that gave a reason behind this seed that we see all the time. She gave her coconut human characteristics and invented new reasons that brought the coconut to look how it does today. So if we're thinking about being creative as being a student and a teacher at the same time, then I think there are ways I am creative outside of school too. I might not be making a thing, but I'm creating something new. So maybe you know that I lead the teenagers in the San Carlos Eaton Hills 4-H Club, and every year we have a whole new group of teenagers. Some of them are returning. Some of them are finally old enough to join the teenagers. Some of them are just new to 4-H that day. And I have to create a group out of lots of different kids with different experiences. The teenagers have to get to know each other well enough to take chances. And I have to take what I already know about specific kids, about high school kids in general, about what we're going to do in 4-H, what our goals are, and I have to mix it around in my head with lots of new information about the actual kids I have this year and create something new. I guess it's like creating a classroom every year in August. I know you create something every afternoon outside of PBS. Do you want to tell me about it? My third graders know that after I leave PBS, I go somewhere to coach a local girls high school lacrosse team. I love it, but I also must be very creative. They are varied in their background of sports. Some have never seen a lacrosse stick or seen a game. Others have been playing club lacrosse their whole lives, and some just know the sport casually. Some play similar sports, like soccer or basketball. Others play sports that aren't as related, like water polo or golf. And some don't play any other kinds of sports. Finally, they all have different things that motivate them and encourage them to play. I have to take my own experience and background to help me with this as a coach. I started playing in seventh grade. I thought it looked really fun. My brother played lacrosse, and I loved how physical he got to be. I didn't realize at the time that girls and boys lacrosse are very different sports, but I fell in love with it anyway. In high school, I continued to play lacrosse in spring and water polo in the fall, and I loved everything about teamwork and competition that I had to keep playing in college and even after. I've been coaching since high school and have continued every year since. So I have to take all this experience and knowledge of playing lacrosse as a sport and a coach, what I know about high school girls, and mix it in with the realities of the 16 girls I have every season. How do I create practices that include and improve the skills of every girl, no matter their background? How do I bring these 16 unique girls together in the best way every day to have a fun and strong and successful team. I have to say, I have to be pretty creative to do that. It definitely sounds like we both are creative all the time. Yes. We are being students and teachers to solve problems, so I would agree. Have a creative Friday. <laughs>